News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGBO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. One accused cop killer is dead of uh, gunshot wounds. The other held on $2 million bail in Missoula. Good morning, everyone. Montana Morning for Thursday, May 18th, 2017. Sky is cloudy after uh, yesterday's snow. There's still plenty of snow up there in the mountains. Right now it's 39 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by First Montana Bank. They're your home for free centennial checking and unlimited cash back every time you use your debit card. Our top story this morning, Lloyd Barris, the 68-year-old man accused, along with his son, of murdering Broadwater County Deputy Mason Moore and shooting at numerous other law enforcement officers, has been placed in the Missoula County Jail on $2 million bond. Deputy County Attorney Brian Lowney asked Judge Murray Anderson for the high bail amount. It's largely due to the severity of the offenses. Additionally, Mr. Barris, when talking with police, indicated that he'd been in a prior shootout in California with police portrayed that in such a way as though he were bragging about it. He's an extreme risk to the community. After Barris's court appearance, Lowney provided more details about the incidents that occurred on Tuesday and that Barris had been charged with 16 counts. He's been charged with 16 counts, 14 attempted deliberate homicide counts, and two accountability for attempted deliberate homicide. The complaint alleges that, in short, he was engaged in a uh, high-speed chase with deputies after he and his son engaged in a shooting with a Broadwater County deputy, uh, which left that deputy dead. Lowney recounted how the Barrises were apprehended. He and his son, Marshall, began firing at the deputies that were pursuing them. Eventually, Marshall was struck and wounded, and uh, Mr. Barris, Lloyd Barris, was uh, struck in the hand and dropped his weapon. He was able to be apprehended at that point. Missoula County Sheriff's Office announced about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon that 38-year-old Marshall Barris died as a result of gunshot wounds he received in a shootout with Missoula authorities on Tuesday. In related stories now, uh, early Tuesday morning, Broadwater County Deputy Mason Moore was shot and killed during what seemed at first like a traffic stop. Attorney General Tim Fox on Talkback yesterday said Deputy Moore was an experienced member of the of law enforcement and related what happened that morning. Deputy Moore has actually been a law enforcement officer for over 15 years, moved to Montana, went to work for Broadwater County about three years ago. He has a wife, Jody, and three children. Um, and uh, he was out on shift, had called into dispatch to say that he was uh, going to effectuate a traffic stop on a speeder. The dispatcher became concerned when uh, they didn't hear back. That was the last communication Moore had with co-workers since his passing. Many Montanans have rallied to show support for Mason and his family. The most visible example were the long lines of vehicles of pedestrians that gathered to honor Moore's body as it was transferred. The community is coming together. Deputy Moore was taken to Billings for an autopsy. People came out to the overpasses, law enforcement agencies came out, the fire department, first responders, ambulance crews, just ordinary citizens who had heard that Deputy Moore was going to Billings. And all along the route, people came out and showed support. Montanans are continuing to support Moore's wife and children. The Bridge Church in Belgrade has already begun a GoFundMe.com fundraiser to cover the cost of the funeral and related expenses. Money for the Moore family can be sent via mail to Broadwater Sheriff Wynn Meehan. The postal address is available on our website at NewstalkKGBO.com. One more related story, according to Montana Highway Patrol Captain Jim Kitchen, who also appeared on Talkback yesterday, the chase to apprehend Lloyd Barris and his son Marshall were accused of murdering a deputy, Mason Moore, put many officers and deputies in the line of fire. Uh, there's a bunch of them got shot at. Um, luckily, uh, nobody got hit. The vehicles did. Yeah, we, you know, through the windshields, uh, these guys were, were going at it. Um, they shot the radiators out. They were shooting through the windshields and everything. So it was a very tense moment, tense scene. Um, and thanks to the motoring public for understanding where we were at and what we were doing. The pursuit began early in the morning, but the investigation that followed caused a traffic backup on I-90 that lasted till about 1.30 in the afternoon. Kitchen explained why it took so long. What people didn't realize is we had actually two stop-stick scenes where that vehicle was stop-sticked, and then we had two shooting scenes that we had to go out there and forensics map, and it took a lot of time and a lot of work. Um, I just want to thank the people that were out there motoring through there. 
for their patience. We did have a couple of irritated people, but that's to be expected. Kitchen said at least five law enforcement vehicles were disabled and are currently out of commission because of Tuesday's firefight. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office has identified a 30-year-old man shot to death by police there in Yellowstone County. Ryan Lowell had been shot Friday after approaching officers with a handgun. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John said Lowell fired at least one shot. Police at Lowell had been in an hour-long standoff. Lowell had been given medical aid by officers before being taken to the Billings Clinic. The incident had occurred on the Montana Highway. Lowell's girlfriend had called authorities saying her boyfriend was threatening suicide. A police negotiator had been speaking to Lowell for nearly an hour before he fired at least one shot toward the officers. St. John said four officers fired simultaneously at Lowell after he shot at them. A May snowstorm caused power outages and travel issues in western Montana yesterday. The Department of Transportation closed I-90 over Homestake Pass east of Butte for a few hours due to jackknife semis and poor travel conditions because of heavy wet snow. Northwestern Energy said about 4,000 customers here in the Missoula area lost power when tree limbs fell on power lines. Other scattered outages were reported west of Helena and in Cascade, Ulm, and Great Falls. A storm system moving across western and southwestern Montana on Wednesday, brought snow to the higher elevations along the Rocky Mountain front and heavy rain at lower elevations. The National Weather Service said three and a half inches of rain had fallen into Pure south of Glacier National Park from Tuesday through noon Wednesday, and it was still raining at the time of that report. Missoula County Elections Office will be holding a drive through event today for voters to drop off their absentee ballots for the special federal election. At the Missoula County Fairgrounds today, the Elections Office there uh, Administrator Rebecca Connors wants voters to get their absentee ballots in as soon as possible. Number one, we're holding a drive through event for ballots to be dropped off on Thursday from 9 to 5.30. It's a great way for us to get ballots back. Before Election Day, we really try to have a large number of ballots counted by that 8 p.m. the time when we release results so that we have a really good idea where candidates stand. And so the earlier we can get ballots, the better. Connors also said the election's headquarters will be open special hours this Saturday, just a few days before the May 25th election. We're typically open regular hours weekdays from 8 to eight to 5. However, um, next Wednesday, the 24th, uh, everything closes statewide. So we really want to encourage voters to um, get to our office before that noon deadline next Wednesday, the 24th. Uh, the special hours this Saturday will be 8 a.m. till noon at the fairgrounds. Connors reminds voters to visit the My Voter webpage uh, to get details on the changes in polling place locations for this special election. Finally, U.S. health agencies are warning that certain tests for lead poisoning may not be accurate. Children under 6 and pregnant and nursing women may need to be retested. The FDA and Centers for Disease Control uh, said yesterday all four tests made by Magellan Diagnostics may give results that are too low when used to measure lead levels in blood drawn from a vein. The FDA says the company's tests shouldn't be used for those kinds of blood samples. The agency believes the issue may date back to 2014. The FDA and CDC say women and parents should ask their doctor whether they need to be tested again. Our news talk time now is 613. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Patchy areas of fog this morning will give way to partly to mostly cloudy skies. High temperatures will be in the upper 50s and low 60s. Tonight, overnight lows in the upper 30s. Mostly sunny skies Friday, highs in the mid-60s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.